That's it. So when I say women get beat in Islam, I'm using Quran and Hadith sources. When I say men are women allowed to sleep with little girls, religion. I'm using Quran and Hadith verses. Women get That's beat it. in every religion. No, not in Christianity. Oh, in, in, Christian, in Christianity, that's not the case. Let me. Are you delusional? There's little. That's the case in every in every religion. Again, uh, no, you're missing the point. Again, no. Show me, the, show me the verse where it says, "Men beat so your wives." On Islam, like there's literally people all over. Show the me the verse in the Bible wives. where it says, "Men, you can beat your wives." Show me that in the Bible anywhere. I'll leave. I'll 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 I'll, I'll, I'll spit on the Bible if you show me that. Show me in the Bible. Uh -huh. Where men, where husbands are allowed to beat their wives. I'll spit on that verse. The God, the God of Islam is not the true God. And I can show this to you. I can show you that you would never believe in this God as the true God. Could you prove that to me? Absolutely. Like so that for God is not the right God. Absolutely. Absolutely. So 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 for example, for example. Um do you believe that God is good and, and true and, and you know, all of these things? You believe he's good and just? Yes. Okay, beautiful. I, I have the same conviction. Now, let me show you something that, and uh, this, may, this is going to be harsh to Muslim ears, but we're having an honest conversation, but I find absolutely heinous, and there's no way that this is, this is God. Let me show you something. If you go to the Quran, in chapter 65, verse 4, it teaches something. It talks about divorce. Okay. And in this chapter on divorce, it talks about three categories of women that you're allowed to divorce, or that, not that you're allowed, but how to deal with three categories of women that you're divorcing, okay? I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna read the verse and let it speak for itself and you'll see. So chapter 65, verse four, the chapter of divorce, this is what it says. As for your women who have passed the age of menstruation, in case you do not know, their waiting period is three months. And for those who have not menstruated, there it is three months as well. And as for those who are pregnant, their waiting period ends with delivery. Okay? So you have three categories of women here, 65-4. They're divorcing women who are too old to menstruate. They're in menopause. So they're divorcing them. So what is their waiting period when they get divorced? The waiting period is when they're allowed to move on to another man. Okay? Um. Their waiting period is three months for a woman who is in menopause that you're divorcing, okay? The second category of women, it says, and for those who have not menstruated. So let me ask you, you're a woman. Who are the females <clears throat> that have not menstruated? What type of female is that? I mean, you know, there's women that have actual biological issues with their with their body that they literally do not have periods. Okay. That so could be somebody that, that, that can that can be included in that. And what else, what other category is that? A woman who can't get her period? No, not can't, but who hasn't menstruated yet. Because it says has not menstruated. I mean, yeah, a minor. Some exactly. obviously someone who is not, you know. That has stepped into, you know, um, puberty. Their adolescence is in the, yeah, their yeah. puberty. They haven't, hit, they haven't hit puberty yet. So, as you said, these are females who are minors, and it could also be females that have some rare biological issues. Either way, both of those count. Now, <clears throat> The verse says nothing about sicknesses or anything like that. Just about people who have not yet menstruated yet. Those are those are the minors. The Quran is teaching that you're allowed to marry, not you, but men, Muslim men, are allowed to marry and divorce and have sexual relations with minors and divorce them. 
and pass them off to the next man three months later. Okay. Now, this is what is interesting about this, because I want you to know that it's not my own interpretation. A lot of most they say we got to go to the scholars. We got to see what the tough seers say, right? So when we go to the tough seer, we'll go to somebody like Ibikathir, for example, uh -huh. or any other big scholars. All of them say the same thing, by the way. All of them say the same exact thing. But this is what this is what it says here. So Ibikathir, he says. The idda, which is the waiting period, of those in menopause and those who do not have menses, do not menstruate. Oh. Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause. And that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based on chapter two, excuse me, 222. Okay. Now, this is the part that is crazy, okay? It says, the same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Their waiting period is three months like those in menopause. This is his meaning when he says, and for those who have not menstruated or have no courses. So this is Ibn Kathir, one of the biggest Sunni tafsir, tafsirs in all of Sunni Islam, who understands that this is talking about minors. Okay. Okay. Um, all of the scholars said, here's another one, Jalalain. These are two, two scholars together who, who write a tafsir. Um, they, 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 let me read the part that's relevant. If you have doubts, all right, their prescribed period is three months. There's a guy, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, there's a guy named Malik that wants to come up and I think that would be a good opportunity for him to jump on as well. But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reply to what you're saying. Yeah, sure. Ahead, I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll bring him up next. I talk to Malik all the time. Perfect. So it says here, so this is Jalalain, the two Jalals and those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age, their period shall also be three months, okay? So all of the scholars are in consensus that the Quran here is talking about prepubescent girls, girls that have not hit puberty yet. What do you think about this? You know, I mean, this is a, a topic that I've, you know, I hear about all the time. I'm not 100%, you know, understanding of it. I personally don't believe in it in my, myself. I would never let, you know, my daughter, you know, marry at the age of 13 or 12 or whatever the case is. But I also don't know how life was back in the day. Well, let me, um, let me show you. Let me show you how life was back in the day. There's many things that not, and I'm sorry, there's many things like that situation. But I'm sure back in the days as well in Christianity or Judaism, for example, um, I don't know if you know that this, but there's certain sects of Judaism that have like these really orthodox Jews, super religious Jews that will literally suck like the. Be careful with your with your words here on the uh, little part of a newborn baby. And I know, that's I, I, know I know what you're talking about. That's that's sick. You that's not in, that's not in the scriptures. That that's sick. So, but that's what I'm saying. So it's that's like sick. it's not. That's exactly, but that doesn't mean that it just that that we have to do just one hundred percent Islam is just out the door. It's debunked. Yes, yes, we do. If because we talk about, let's say, let, for let example, me, Christianity was. Let me tell you what, why. Hold on, hold on. Let me hold on. But like, let me ask you this. Wait, what wait. I, I want to give you. I want to give you something to this because notice the difference here. The difference between some Jewish rabbi or whatever doing what the the sick action that they're doing with little boys and doing that thing. Um, that's men and things of this nature. And you even recognize that that's disgusting, right? This right here is coming from what you deem as the word of God. This is what, what you believe. This is God himself sanctioning this. Nowhere does the scripture sanction what those guys are doing with, with the boys. That's horrid. 
Matter of fact, that's an abomination to God, according to the scriptures. Right. But your Quran allows for this. This is this is Allah Himself giving permission for this. Okay. So it's not about cultural relativ relativism, about oh, your culture, my culture, back then, that time, now, this time. No, it's not about that. It's about God and his morality and his justice and his moral character. He would right. never allow something right. and permit something that dis like for example, let me give you an example. Right. So if so here's me, the thing. So so then why wait, did God allow let, wait, let me let me let me give you an example. example. Christianity wait, allowed slavery. Wait, let me give you an example. Huh? Let me give you an example. Did they not? Answer let me show you, let me show you what the Bible says on this subject. I've been listening to you. I, I know. Want you to just I, 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 let me give you the Bible why verse on this subject. Christianity or quote unquote our I don't, I don't know why you're. I don't know why you're slavery. going off like this. Let me show you. I'm not going what the off. Bible. I'm just asking you a question. Okay, good. So just relax for a second. Let me give you the Bible. Let me show you how it was back in the day. This is chap. This is First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse thirty-six. First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse thirty-six. It says. <clears throat> Hold on, uh, let me. Uh... Do do do. There we go. Someone said in the comments, slavery is not a sin. <laughs> I don't. I don't care what the comments say. Let's focus on our conversation. So this is First Corinthians chapter seven, verse thirty-six. This is what it says. It says, but if any man thinks he is acting improperly toward his virgin, uh -huh. if she is past marriageable, marriageable age, and so it must be, he can do what he wishes. He is not sinning. They can get married. So 600 years before the Quran comes, we have the Bible that tells us explicitly that the the female has to be past marriageable age and it must be so for her and the man to get married. Can't marry a child. Can't have sexual relations with a child. God wouldn't, this is what I would expect God to sanction. I wouldn't, when I read the Quran, I would not expect that. So my, my question to you is, I, you said that you, you don't even believe that, that you wouldn't let your child go through that or letting anybody do that with your child, which is beautiful, which is righteous. That's good. My question is then, how can you believe in this book that's saying this? It's hard because, you know, as much as I understand and appreciate like my faith and stuff, mm -hmm. But even within my faith, I, I don't own 100 percent. But but there's that that's just life. Nothing in life is cert like certain. There's nothing in this life that's certain except for death. So I can't tell you what my four, you know, forefathers did or how things was in the back back in the day. All I could tell you is me personally, what I think God is. And my, you know, I try to just, you know, live to be a good person and do right by others and serve other people. You know, to sit here and argue semantics is one thing because it's like. We can get to the, you know, we can argue semantics, try to get to the point, and then what? Like, there's still, there's still a mission that we have to accomplish as a Muslim or as a, as a Christian. Do you I think this is semantics? Do not believe. I do. Well, that's. But again, going back to Christianity, Christianity, a lot of, a, a, and Christians back in the day, they were not good people either. That's why the actual book was revealed to them because they were, they were, they were misguided and they were not living life. That's why there's religion to well, add well, order well, to well, life. So well, you're kind of switching mere, directions. The mere fact that Christianity you're, existed. You're switching directions. Hold on, hold on. You're switching directions. No, I'm not. I'm not. You and are. I'm sorry if it comes off that way. I'm just trying to get to the point. Okay, that, so so stay focused you know, to the point. I'm, I'm just, do you do you believe that I, this is semantics? That's not what I want for, for myself. That's yeah. not how I believe. That's you know. Do you, yeah, do you, do you believe? So so if here, I don't no, believe the things that I would. No, wait, wait, wait. Stop. I have to stop you. Notice what notice the difference in the points that you and I are bringing. I am not bringing you what Muslim people do or what a, maybe a bad bunch of Muslims have done in the past or whatever. I'm not bringing that to you. I'm bringing you your Quran, what your Quran teaches. Nowhere in the Bible does it sanction or allow for 
certain evil acts and things to take place. I'm not talking about a bad bunch of Christians or people who claim to be Christians who are out acting in sin and in, in, living in sin and things of this nature. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the source. If you want to talk about Christianity, bring up the Bible. If I want to talk about Islam and my critiques against Islam, I'm going to bring up the source, the Quran, right? So it's not about what some Muslims may have done in the past, a bad bunch of Muslims here and there. No, I'm talking about what your religion actually teaches. And it teaches here that men are allowed to have relations with girls who have not even hit puberty yet. And I know you know that that's wrong. I know you do. You, uh, you, you even I said it. I literally just told you. I'm not, def uh, what, what did I just say? I said, I don't believe in that. Good. So then that means you reject okay. the Quran. So that, so, but that's what I'm, that's my point. So if I don't believe in that, but I'm not a Christian, you're essentially telling me I'm still going to go to hell, even though I have the same beliefs and concepts as you guys. So, so what are you saying? Am, so, am I going to hell because of that? Good question. So I'm not saying, number one, the, the, here's the only thing that you and I have in common so far when it comes to our concepts is that we're both monotheists. We both believe in one God. Now, remember, I was showing you, you said, can you prove to me that the God of Islam is not the true God? This is one of the proofs. That's what I was just showing you. So yes, we have a foundation. You and I together have a foundation that there's one true God. And my, my point was showing you is that this in Islam, he's not it. But the biblical God, the one that's portrayed in the Bible, who reveals himself in the scriptures of the Bible, he's the true God. He's the one that you have to submit to for your eternal life. Not this. Okay? That's what I'm showing you. Let me show you something else. Let me show you something. Because this isn't just it. But I'm glad that you reject this. I'm so happy that you reject this because you're honest. You know what I'm saying? You're honest. You're like, yeah, this, I don't, I don't believe in that. That means you don't believe in the Quran. So let me show you something else. Look. Do you believe that adultery is wrong? Yes. Right. I, I agree. I mean, literally the Bible says, do not commit adultery. Jesus goes so far as to say um, that if a man even looks at a woman with lust, then he's committed adultery with her in his heart. That's how deep it is to God. So how come you're, you're believing women don't cover? <laughs> no, that's that's nothing to do with that. And there's the Christian women do uh, do veil. It as does. Well. Is that is that not an, like a? It's what is adultery? Adultery. You just said adultery like is the gaze. When, adultery. So how come your women don't cover? They do actually. No, they don't. So, but that that has nothing to do with with adultery. <laughs> so adultery so is. Can we agree that adultery is when a, a man, a, a married, someone who's married, steps out of their marriage? Adultery, like, is, is it not giving? You know, no. Like, it, what do you? So what? So what is adultery? Adultery, and, and adultery. Because adultery, in my understanding, I'm, I'm trying to is tell you. You're not. You're not even trying to listen. I'm women. trying to tell you what adultery is. Well, I'm trying to talk to you, and and you know. So so let's agree on what adultery is. Adultery, for example, or one form of adultery is when someone steps out of their marriage, right? And sleeps with someone else, man or woman. Okay. That's that's okay. one form of adultery, right? So we are all against that. God in the Bible is against that. But in the Quran, here's another problem. In the Quran, this is what it says, chapter four. Chapter 4, verse 24. Come on. What's the deal there? Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. You ready? Okay. So it says this. So it's talking about women that uh, men are allowed to have um, relations with. And so verse 20, so 23 is like, you, you can't sleep with your, your mom's sister. You can't sleep with your mother. You can't sleep with your sister, type of stuff like that. That's verse 23. It's laying out all of that stuff. When we get to verse 24, it continues. And it says, also are forbidden for you are married women. 
-hmm. But it continues. It says, so also forbidden for you are married women, except those whom you capture in war, those whom your right hand possess. Mm -hmm. So there's an exception to the rule, according to the Quran. You're not allowed to commit adultery unless you capture her. You cap you've captured her. You went to battle and you've captured her. Then you can commit adultery. Then you can take this married woman. Now let me ask you this. Do you think that a married woman would willfully uh sleep with her captor who has kidnapped her from her husband who's still alive? Um He's still alive. He's there. They just lost the battle. Hey, I keep getting tagged by Malik. He wants to speak to you. He's been tagging I'll, I'll, me. I'll let Malik in a minute. I've spoken to him many, 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 many times. You're somebody fresh. So Malik is going to have his turn. Right now, you and I are having a good, a good back and forth. So. <clears throat> but yeah, so I was just asking you. Will, uh, do you think that a woman who is married would willingly give herself over to like sexually to her captor when she's married. Do you think that she'll willfully do that? Be like, yeah, sure, you can have me sexually. No, hell no. I, I agree. So what this verse is saying, you can take, you can go rabbits a village, and you and if the woman is married, you're allowed to take her and sleep with her. If she's married, only if she's married, only if she's a uh, captive in war. Right. If she's a Muslim, you can't do that. But if she's a captive in war, you can do that. Your right hand possesses what it's called in Islam. Now, let me read the hadith that goes with this, because this is what's just, what's interesting about this. I'll toss right there. Beautiful. Because someone said online. Watch this. People are going to start the people, you know, the Muslims, guys, you got to you got to learn, man. Don't don't say that I'm a liar. You guys know that I put, I show all the sources, I put everything on the screen, man. Come on, man. Look here. Sunan an Nasai, it's great Sahi. If you were on my YouTube channel, you can see I have it on the screen right now. It's great Sahi, Sunan an Nasai, 3333. Sunan an Nasai, 3333. It says this. It was narrated by Abu Sa'id al Kurdi. So this is giving the background of this verse, okay? Why it was revealed, what happened, What's the, what, what was going on, what's the context? That the prophet of Allah sent an army to Altas. They met the enemy, fought them, and prevailed over them. They acquired female prisoners who had husbands among the idolaters. Now watch this, sis, watch this. The Muslims felt reluctant to be intimate with them. So even the Muslims, after they just won the battle and they have these captive women, these female prisoners, and they know that they're married and their husbands are still right, they're right there. Even the Muslims were reluctant and was like, ah, we, 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 I, I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if we can, can be intimate. It literally says the Muslims were reluctant to be intimate with them. So then they went to Muhammad. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed. Also are forbidden women already married, except those slaves whom your right hand possesses. Sunan Anasai 3333. And the commentator says, meaning this is permissible once you, once they, uh, completed their waiting period, their idda, to make sure they're not pregnant. So here's the background. They're allowed to take captive women who are married while their husbands are alive in their present and they're able to sleep with them. Now you and I both know that a woman would not willfully go with this. Yeah. So if a woman was it would not be in Islam willfully willing to show her hair and show her body much less sleep with a man that's not the case you read it completely out of context so <clears throat> excuse me back in the day essentially during war if you know 
let's say a woman had kids and her husband went out, to, you know, he was in war, died. A man is able to marry her, not just to get married to her, but to provide, you know, that sense of having like support, whether that's financially, emotionally, it doesn't have to even be like an actual marriage that it is that stands in. You got to understand marriage back then is not what it is now, right? If, if your method of marriage or marriage, your understanding in the Christian world is, is, you know, it is what it is, then we wouldn't be high, having the highest rates of divorce right now. Okay. Uh, explaining to me how back in the day our like marriages with, with, you know, back in the day would last a longer time. Point is back in the day, that's how the men would deal with women that have become widowed. They would marry them. You know, even if there was three or four wives, they would just marry them to protect them, to give them some type of like protection and, and financial support, emotional support. Women back then only relied on the men. Sister, and in war, you have to be fair. So if I'm going to kill another man, he's you not, know, he's I not. think it's something nice. They're not unalive. They're alive. They're still married. And the where does it right say there. that? They, where does it say that there's a, that they're alive? Though? I'm gonna read it again. They acquired female prisoners who had husbands among the idolaters. And this is in the Quran? This is the hadith that backs up the Quran. Hadith, verse. no, a hadith is not the Quran. Mm. So we're Quran only now? Yeah. Okay, we're Quran only, guys. We're Quran only. No worries. So uh, what do you call a woman who was married, but her husband has now passed away? What do you call a woman? What does she call? A widow. A widow. So she's not married anymore, right? Right. Okay. This verse doesn't call these women widows. It still calls them married. It says that they are married slaves now. So their husbands are still alive. They're not widows. You know? I don't know about that, to be honest. Come on. We, we both know about I that. I don't. So, no, look. I don't. I told you what I know, and I told you what I don't know. Okay, fair so enough. There's no need to like, be, you know, like, come on. I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful with you. I'm telling you the honest I truth. Didn't, I, didn't say I, that, I didn't say you're being disrespectful. Um, I, think, I think religion in general is a lifelong journey anyway. So let's say, for example, Christianity is where I need to be ended up in. I have to go through what I'm going through right now. I have to go through the confusion, the everything. So... You know, let's let's try to be a little bit more compassionate for people who are trying to find the truth, because right now it just feels like, you know, you're trying more to tell me that my faith is wrong instead of telling me the, the truth. And if my let's say, you know, my faith is wrong. Well, just tell me the truth. Yes, of and course. Just, like uh, literally uh, itemizing things in the Quran uh, that, you know, and then if you want to talk about why Sis. was so then I want to ask you this. Let, you let you me, know, you mentioned all these verses in the Quran. I want to ask you something here. Host, I want to ask you why there are so many verses of the Bible if there's one true message, and if also, you know, let, let, it, let me let me stop. Let me. You asked the question. Right? Let's, let's do it let one at a time. Up, remember, but Jesus spoke Aramaic. One at a time. Remember, one at a time. One issue okay, so at a time. You can, you can go through literally a hadith for twenty minutes, and I can't ask. I, you a yeah, well, it wasn't twenty minutes. I just read one hadith based on the same subject that we were talking on. So <clears> now, throat> right throat> now, you're bringing up a different issue other than what we were talking about. That's, so okay. that's why I'm saying one issue at a time. Remember, I am here and available to deal with whatever question you have. I'm here. My point is, is that one at a time. That's it. So I what I did was, is I gave you, because I didn't want you to think that I'm giving you something of my own understanding or of, you know, like I'm using the verse out of its context. So I brought the hadith that gives us the background of the verse to give us more to give you more information on this. I don't because I, I don't deal with this stuff dishonestly. So I wanted to show you that not only does your Quran uh, allow for sexual relations with prepubescent little girls, but 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 also for the captivity. You know, capt capt captivity happens in war, but for the sexual violation of married women with these captives. That's what I'm showing you. And I and it's, you ask for the truth. It's not just, I, I, don't, I don't just want to crush Islam for you and then just leave you like that. No, I'm showing you the alternative. Remember, we're comparing. I'm telling you that the, that the God of the Bible, the God who revealed himself in scripture, 
is the true God. And I'm showing you the contrast. Remember, I showed you the verse in 65, four with the children marrying little girls. I showed you the opposite with the Bible, how she has to be of marriageable age, right? Now, let me show you the opposite here with the Bible. I'm giving you the truth. I'm not just going to leave it one-sided. I'm going to give you the alternative. So this is what the Bible says. If we go to Deuteronomy chapter 21, this is what? Now, this is way back in the law of Moses, okay? Way back in the law of Moses, we see the law and the character of God, how to deal with captive women. Because like I said, war happens. You're going to have captives, right? How did, yeah. right? So there's nothing, in, uh, you know, essentially wrong with having captives. But the problem is, is that in Islam, it gives you a, a, an out to sin with these captives, to commit adultery, while God never gives an exception. Doesn't matter if they're captive or whatever. Matter of fact, this is how you're supposed to treat them. So um, <laughs> literally the heading is called Fair Treatment of Captured Women. That's funny. Let me show it on the screen. Just in case you ever go to my uh, YouTube channel. And check it out and want to look at this later. I'm, I'm posting all of the sources. You said, on you, the have a, you, said you have a YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I what I do is I post everything that I'm showing sharing with you. I'm putting on the screen on the YouTube screen to share so that everybody can see the sources, you know, and everybody can have it. Yeah. So yeah, because you know, I'd, I'd I'd like something to reference to. Yeah, of course. So I'll <clears throat> before before we end our conversation today, I will give you my YouTube channel, I'll give you the exact video. That you can go back and be like, okay, so yeah, that okay, you'll see exactly what I was reading off of. Okay. Um, okay. all right, so now so this is Deuteronomy. This is the Bible. This is Deuteronomy okay. chapter 21, starting at verse 10. It says, When you go to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God hands them over to you, and you take some of them prisoner. If you and you see a beautiful woman among the captives and desire her and want to take her as your wife. You are to bring her into your house. She must shave her head and trim her nails, remove the clothes she was wearing when she was taken prisoner, live in your house and mourn for her father and her mother a full month, okay? So she's, after that, you may have sexual relations with her and be her husband. So how are they supposed to be treated? One, you remove the dirty clothes, remove the dirty clothes that they're wearing, you know, allow them to groom themselves, take care of themselves, refresh themselves, and give them space and time to mourn. They just had, we just had a battle, just, you know, whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop, you know, lost their mother or father or somebody in the family member, let her mourn. Once the mourning period is over, then she's in your house, you take care of her, you can be her wife, marry her, and have sexual relations with her. That's how to treat the captive woman. Now watch this. Verse 14. Then if you guys are, if you are not satisfied with her, you are to let her go wherever she wants. But you must not sell her for money or treat her as a slave because you have humbled her or humiliated her. Mm -hmm. That's how the Bible says you're supposed to treat a captive woman back when, you know, Israel was going to war and stuff. You had to marry them, give them time to mourn, let them live in your house, and then you can have sexual relations with her. Not before marriage. It's right. marriage like and sexual. It's it has to be organic. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so uh, I have a question. Sure. So, um, so how come women in Christianity take the man's last name? And, and, you know, obviously women, like for us, we don't take our you know, man's last name because we don't belong to a man. You know, that's a right that we have. So why do Christians, Christian women take the, the last name of, of the man if, you know, they're, that's not their own? Or, or can you explain that? So number one, chapter four, verse 34 says that you do belong to the man. That's number one. Number two Taking the last name is more of a culture thing. It's not a Christian thing. It's not a Christianity type of thing. You don't find this in the Bible where last name, you know, you're just, they're part of the man's household now. Like, I guess that the man's name or last name represents his household, I would say. So a wedding, a wedding is just a representation of a man and how, and a man yes, in yes. his, um, 
No, you're, you asked about the last name exchange. That's yeah, not, but, that's not but that's, specifically. Yeah, difficult. but but when when we have a marriage, for example, a healthy one or you know one that is blessed by God, um, I guess I'm trying to figure out the question that I'm trying to get to. Give me a sec. So. <clears throat> You yep. said that, you know, essentially that, you know, like the man is like kind of like the head of the household, right? Yes. And you're bringing this woman in whatever situation it is, whether they he was war related or they were in a relationship. And then finally they decided to get married to bring the woman in the house. The, how, the home essentially is his, right? So uh, God does say essentially that, you know, that the woman belongs to the man. The Bible says that the man, that the man belongs to the woman as well. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says well, why husbands. Take his last name. Well, why is it the opposite? Well, that, like, like I said, that's not. That has nothing to do with the Bible. That's a culture thing. It's not the Bible thing. But the Bible says, husbands, your body is not your own, but it is your wife's. Your body belongs to your wives. And then it also says the same thing to the wife. Wives, your body is not your own. It belongs to the husband. They're one flesh, according to the Bible, equals, according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. But according to the Quran and Islam, the Quran, oh, man, this is another subject. Women in Islam belong solely to the man, to the man, to the husband, not vice versa. Yes, you know, let me grant that wives do have rights, certain rights in the, in, in the relationship. The Quran does say that. However, the Quran says that the women belong to the men. In fact, they belong to the men so much that 434 says, if you fear disobedience from your wife, if you fear disobedience, not if she's actually disobedient, and you probably heard this before, but if you fear disobedience, then you are able to strike her, beat her. That's what the Quran says, literally verbatim. With a stick, it's not literally mean. You have to understand. Remember, it doesn't on, say that with a you're stick. Talking, you're talking to somebody who speaks Arabic and reads it, okay? Oh, so good. So you so you know what the word means, to, right? Yeah, so that's why I'm trying to explain it to you. That doesn't mean literally beat the crap out of your, your wife. It's just like, it's like a metaphor. It's like saying, hey, like, chill. Like, like if you're tapping a cat because they're, like, doing something bad or whatever. But you just, you, I, it's it's funny that you're saying that, you know, women belong to men, women belong to men. And then the suddenly Quran. you read a context that of the Quran that you don't read. Your native language is not that language. So you're not going to understand it. Of course, you're not going to understand it from from your your perspective. Remember, you said, so remember, I, you said on. Quran please, only, please right? Speak over me. I let you talk. Please allow me to speak, okay? Okay. Um, what I'm trying to tell you is in that in, it, it to me, it's 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 funny that you said, OK, like, yeah, OK, let's say we, we agree to women belong to men, women to belong to men. So are you just saying that women belong to men by title? Because that's not what the Quran says. The Quran does not say beat the shit out of your women. Okay. And in fact, women have more rights in Islam and we don't have to. So let me ask you something. Wait, wait, wait no, no, no. You're, you're running on. Hold on, no, no, no. Hold on, you, hold on. you made a statement. Why I want to address is it that in Christian countries, no, because if we're going to cut the cake, let's cut the cake. Why do you why keep on bringing it, Christian countries up or Christian why or what Christians have done? Is, we're not talking Christian about what Christians have done. Is sex workers excuse allowed? Me, excuse me. We're not talking again. Again. Hold on. I got to. I got to stop you. I have to stop you. Calm down. I have to stop you again. Stop bringing up certain people in culture or certain people that you say is Christian kingdoms or Christian countries, stop doing that. Notice I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm bringing you up your Quran verse, your Quran, not but culture, I'm you the truth. your There's Quran. There's Christian countries that allow sex workers to so, be okay. And, 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 those, and those, countries, country. are, those countries are not Christian. May God judge them. God condemns them. They're not Christian countries. Do you see that? You see how I can tell you if people are claiming to be Christian and they're doing things that go against the Bible, then God condemns them. You get it? So I want you to do the same with the Quran. With the Quran, notice I'm not bringing up, oh, Saudi Arabia allows this or, oh, look at this, Morocco you know, allows this. Hadith, hadith I'm not doing not that. Quran. I'm bringing you hadith, the, Quran, hadith, the Quran and I'm bringing you the Hadith. Hadith is not Quran. Okay, so guess what? We're just going with the Quran. Remember, you said earlier we're Quran only, right? Exactly. Since you're okay, reading good. the Quran, we're Quran I'm only. To, I'm trying to translate what that context is. Okay, okay, means. stop, stop. Being you I got you. Stop, stop. You don't want to listen. Show me. To me. Okay, 
in, in chapter 4, verse 34, I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it right now. I got the Arabic right here. Where, it, where here does it say beat with a stick? It doesn't. Thank you. So please do not add to the Quran. It doesn't say that. It just says, what is it, it just says, and I quote, it says, hold on, no, let me get, get back because I kind of lost the page there. Let me get back to it. Let's, let's, let's be real with the text here, man. Here we go. <clears throat> da, da, da. Then finally, then, so if you fear disobedience, advise them and forsake them in their bed and strike them. Beat them. That's verbatim what the Quran says. We have to be honest with the text, right? I'm not making this up. I'm not misinterpreting it. I'm literally just reading. I have the Arabic right here. I even played it. I don't know if you can hear it. Let me hold on. Let me turn it up. I'm looking at it. Give me one second. Okay. Let me turn it up though for the Yadi. Let me see if you guys can hear this. Y'all hear that? And strike them. It's not me. It's not me. Then I know that you, you said to throw away the Hadith, but I want to show you how this verse was implemented according to the Hadith. You say that women have more rights in Islam? No, you guys get beat in Islam. You get molested in Islam. You get. Excuse me, we get beat in Islam? Yes. That's Absolutely. Not true. That's not true. I can show the sister. You ever heard of a, heard of a, a so chef molesting a kid? Nope. That's yes. y'all. All the time. That is y'all's priest. No, no, you, no. There's a few bad apples in the bunch, but as far as reputation, you guys have far more. I'm not. I'm not talking people. about reputation, sis. I'm you talking about. You just said y'all do this and y'all do that. No, 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 no. The hell so, I, so again, let me let me be clear. Maybe I wasn't clear. I'm gonna be clear. Everything that I say to you, everything that I say to you, is coming from the Quran and Hadith sources. That's it. So when I say women get beat in Islam. I'm using Quran and Hadith sources. When I say men are women allowed to sleep with little girls, religion. I'm what using Quran and saying? Hadith verses. Women get That's beat it. in every religion. No, not in Christianity. In, in, Christian, in Christianity, that's not the case. Let me. Are you delusional? There's little. That's the case in every in every religion. Again, uh, no, you're missing the point. Again, no. Show me, a, show me the verse where it says, says "Men beat your wives." On Islam, like there's literally people all over. Show the me the verse in the Bible wives. where it says, "Men, you can beat your wives." Show me that in the Bible anywhere. I'll leave. I'll 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 I'll, I'll, I'll spit on the Bible if you show me that. Show me in the Bible. <laughs> Where men, where husbands are allowed to beat their wives. I'll spit on that verse. I mean, if the religion itself allows slavery, I would I would assume that it Come allows on. everything else, You're, again, right? There you so. go again. Stop it. You've been, you've been, you've been really, you've been doing good. Like, you know, you've been in the middle, uh, you've been honest, but you've also been like defensive as well. I have something to say, you're like, uh, uh get back in your place. No, it's not get, get back, back in your place. place. It's stay on this subject. This is not a conversation. It's, it's, it's stay, on, to it's stay on topic. I have to direct the conversation because you got to stay on topic. That's all. You have the freedom to speak. You know, I listen to you. I've been listening to you and I just, you got to stay on topic. That's all. The Bible says this. Let me show you something. The Bible says this about husbands and wives. Remember, I told you that wives, the body, the wives, they belong to the husbands and husbands also belong to the wives. The Bible also says this, that if a husband were to mistreat his wife, his prayers would not be answered. God would not hear his prayers if he mistreated his wife. That's how serious the union and the respect of a woman and the covenant between a man and a wife 
That's how serious God uh, it is with God. A man cannot abuse his wife and expect God to hear his prayers. Isn't that deep? Not. Yeah, but I agree with you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Not all Muslims are like that. I'm not talking about Muslims, sister. I'm talking about the, what your Quran teaches. I'm not talking about Muslims. Said five minutes ago, you do, you, you do, your religion allows this. Your religion, that's not always the case. Well, it is though. It, it is the. I'm showing you that it's the case. Look, look. Let, let me, let me also be clear about this. When it comes to Mises, I don't know if you noticed yet, but I tend to separate the religion of Islam from Muslim people. The religion of Islam and Muslim people, two different things in my in my view. Like you, for example, you're a Muslim woman, a Muslim lady, right? Uh -huh. You're a Muslim woman and you, your, mora your morality, um, for the most part, so far that I've seen in this conversation, we agree on everything so far when it comes to yeah, our morality. I don't understand why when I, when I talk, I, you know, you don't give me that opportunity. I do. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to stay on subject. But what I'm saying is, is that as a Muslim, you have a different moral code and a different moral standard than huh? Islam, the religion. And I find that with most Muslim people, most Muslim people, and I'm saying this, listen, most Muslim people are better than the Quran. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the Quran is evil. Islam is evil. Muslim people are not. Muslim I mean, people that I run into are beautiful that's people. That's subjective because I could say that the Bible is evil and then say that you're not. Well, we can we can actually go through because it. If and we go past, you know, it's like going, you know, we have to look at the past to see where, you know, where we're going. And it's like there's been things that Christianity or not Christianity, but that Christians who held, you know, like just really super religious Christians. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that there is evil in every religion. It's not just Islam. And it feels like that's what you're kind of preaching to, that it's just Islam that it's e that's evil. It's not. No. So there's not evil in every religion. There's evil in every religion except one. And that's the religion of Christ. The God that in the revelation that Jesus brought us, his religion, you can notice, we can never point to Jesus and say, uh, I wouldn't do that, or uh, I disagree with that. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Jesus is the moral standard, the embodiment of benevolence, the embodiment of righteousness, the embodiment of what is good and holy and just and right. Jesus, in him, there is no sin. There is no evil. You cannot point to Jesus and say, oh, this is wrong, or Oh, this I can't do this in this time or in the past or in the future, whatever. Jesus right. is the standard for all mankind at all yeah. times. Allah is not. I mean, I'd have to disagree with that, but I well, definitely agree with what you said. That I mean, well, that that's that's why we're here, you know, to so I can show you why I'm saying what I'm saying. No, and I appreciate it, and I I hope you that. You know my tone or whatever the case is uh, you know you don't take it disrespectfully you've been, you've been, you've been i am awesome. here to learn i've you know and and everybody's different like so it's just like it's true it's just like uh, you know even if i am trying to learn about christianity I, you know i i'm the type of person where if, if i'm being judged or if, if if people are just like being rude or just just mean for no reason it's just not gonna make me receptive to the message true so and i also never want to the one thing about me is i will never ever respect anyone's disrespect excuse me disrespect anyone's faith because i don't know what you had to go through in your life the trials and tribulations that you went through in your life uh, to disrespect you, you know what I mean? So I, I, I love everybody. I respect everybody. Um, thank you so much for clarifying a lot of the points that, you know, I had questions about, especially when it came to, you know, why God needed to be, you know, quote unquote, baptized. So, you know. No. Guys, they shut down the live. Wow. Let me try to appeal this. That's crazy. Wow. Look at how Satan works, y'all. They mass reported the live and got it shut down. Incredible.
Incredible. This is what... <laughs> Guys, they can't stop this. They can't stop this whatsoever. They can't stop this whatsoever. They tried, they, 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 they reported it for hate speech. We believe in an inclusive community and individual expression without fear of abuse to help foster a welcoming, a, a welcoming, uh, whatever, I'm not even reading the rest. But hate speech and hateful behaviors is what the Muslims have reported the live on. Hate speech, y'all. Imagine that. Imagine saying that Muslims are beautiful people. Muslims are better than the Quran. They have a more moral, they have a higher moral standard than what we see in, the, in Islam. And that is hate speech. <laughs> you were causing too much shubahat. 